After so many years of the Wizarding World franchise, from the original Harry Potter books, to the movies, to Cursed Child, to the Fantastic Beast movies, to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and the Universal theme parks, we finally have an original open world video game set in this world. This is something I've wanted for a very long time. So let's talk about it! Hogwarts Legacy so Hogwarts Legacy, like I said, is a new video game set in J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World franchise, even though she was not involved with the making of this game at all. This game's gonna be for all systems, I played it on PlayStation 5, and it's an original story. It takes place in the late 1800s, and you play as a fifth year student who is just transferring to Hogwarts, and so you're going about your school year, and then a mystery starts to unfold involving ancient magic, and also a goblin rebellion is rising up, so we gotta take care of them. Crazy stuff and let's play Hogwarts. This game is a ton of fun. Cause like I said, this is something I've wanted for a long time. Just an open world Hogwarts simulator game essentially. You're a student, you go to your classes, you learn different spells, you do what Hogwarts students do. You can explore to your heart's content, not just the Hogwarts castle, mind you. You can also go to Hogsmeade and way beyond. I'll get to that in a minute. Cause first I do want to touch on the characters. You have fellow students, you have professors. I would say like the other main supporting character, the one you talk to the most is Professor Fig. He's the one who accompanies you on this whole ancient magic quest. And he does end up being a pretty good character because he does have a personal tie to it. He's studying this ancient magic for a reason. And so you're like, oh, all right, so let's figure this out together. The headmaster of Hogwarts is named Nigelus Black. So yeah, you imagine he's an ancestor of Sirius Black and his whole family. And he's voiced by Simon Pegg, which is pretty cool, and he's also a douche. Yeah, like, you gotta wonder, some of the stuff he does in this game, you're like, how did he get appointed headmaster? I mean, he bans Quidditch for the year, so there's no Quidditch in this game. Yeah, not the friendliest of teachers. Some of the students you involve yourself with, though, they eventually became, like, some of my favorite characters in the game. Sebastian Stallow has, like, the most interesting story arc out of all of them. I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't played the game yet, but that's the one where you're like, holy shit, that's dark. I do want to give props to that. I like Natty a lot. I also like Poppy's arc. These are all, like, side quests that you do with these other characters, but they're really enjoyable. Let's talk about the graphics in this game because, oh my god, the environments in this game are just stellar. I mean, yeah, you get Hogwarts Castle and you can walk around, you see stuff going on. Like when you're walking through the halls, you'll see like little quirky things going on with the students. Or you'll see ghosts fighting with swords. It just makes this world feel so alive. It's all about that immersion, dude. And like I said, it's not just Hogwarts Castle. You can explore Hogsmeade, and then you can go way beyond. The map expands like really far outside the castle. You're basically exploring the Scottish Highlands, which I will say there is one plot hole in the fact that you are allowed to go out at night. Yeah, last I checked, Hogwarts students aren't allowed to leave the castle at night, but you can do that in this game, and all the environments just look amazing. I will say though that graphically the game is not completely perfect. I mean the characters themselves, they don't look as good as I've seen characters look in other video games. And yeah, that's my character. You can customize your character to look however you want him or her to look. But graphically speaking, I've seen better. And also the voice acting isn't that great in the game. When you have one-on-one -on -one dialogue with someone else, just in my opinion, the voice acting isn't the best. But other than that though, this game really excels in the open world aspect. You can fly around on your broom, which I really built that up. I got all the broom upgrades. I made that a priority of mine because I just love flying. I mean, seriously, who hasn't wanted to fly around Hogwarts Castle? You can finally do that in this game to your heart's content and it's beautiful. I love it and the score kicks on. You feel like you are there. After that, the spells are really cool. When you're in combat, you know, you have your basic cast, your like basic attack, and then you learn different spells throughout the game. And it's actually kind of funny how you learn them. They're like these different patterns that you have to like move the cursor along with, which I recognize. I don't know if any of you are with me on this, but there was a mobile app that's discontinued now, I think, but it was called Harry Potter Spells. And I'm telling you, the spells in this game, the patterns are ripped straight from that app. I recognize a lot of them. I was like, oh yeah, that's from that app that I had back in the day. Not all of them were the same, but a good amount of them were. I love that. And yeah, you learn different spells like Confringo, Bombarda, Defindo. Those are your like attack spells. And then you have spells that do different things like Reparo, builds things back up, Lumos, Accio. 
you have like a few spells at your disposal. And then if you want to switch them out, you can go into like your arsenal of spells and switch them out with another one. I thought that was a really good way to do it because it's easy and it's fast. And the combat is really smooth too, like surprisingly so. Yeah, there are bad guys in this game because of this mystery that starts unfolding and you end up taking them on with the help of your supporters, professors, fellow students. And so you're fighting guys with magic, basic casts, you learn combos of spells. You have that trace of ancient magic, so you hit R1 and you can throw objects at people. Ancient magic builds up, you hit L1 and R1, and it does like an ancient magic fatality on someone. One of which is you transfigure someone into a chicken. Like a literal chicken. I crack up every time I do that. That's so funny that they thought of that. The combat's really fun in this game. Like even after you beat the main story, you just go out and explore the world and you look for bad guys to fight because it's just fun. And you build up experience points, you get stronger. Good shit. The side quests are pretty fun too. The side quests, they do detract from the main story in terms of flow. Like towards the end of the game, I'd beaten the entire game. I beat the final boss, but then to get my true ending, I had to be at a certain level and I wasn't quite there yet. So I was like, okay, so I got to go do side quests. I basically had to do like all the side quests I had left that I hadn't done yet. And I had to go out and find more to do to get that experience so I can finally get the true ending. Kind of made it feel anticlimactic. That being said, the side quests are still pretty fun. Because again, some of the side quests, they're like bonding with certain characters. They're like character missions, like confidants and persona. Although there's no romance in this game at all. I don't know why, maybe they're saving it for the next one. And of course, this game being open world, there's gonna be plenty of extras, collectibles, different things you can wear, different brooms you can fly, all sorts of customizable shit, which is greatly appreciated in this game. Because again, you can be the kind of Hogwarts student that you want to be. Do whatever you want to do. You have the room of requirement. You can customize that to look however you want. You can take care of magical creatures. Yeah, like you have a little den in the room of requirement where you can feed creatures if that's what you want to do. If not, well, that's okay too. But then you have things like different wand handles. You unlock like a bunch of different handles for your wand and you're like, I'm never going to notice it when I'm fighting. It's like Jedi Fallen Order. It's like, I'm not going to care what my lightsaber looks like when I'm fighting. Same thing here. But other than that, I love all the extras in this game. The main story of this entire game, I think it's solid. Not the most like mind-blowing thing I've ever seen in this franchise. There's some Easter eggs to Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts where if you know that stuff, you'll be like, oh, that's really cool. And then there's some stuff you see for the first time in this game where like, all right, that's a new thing. Like this ancient magic. It's the late 1800s, so things are a little different. You welcome it all because it's so immersive. Of course, one of the most immersive things about this game is its score. The music in this game is amazing. I remember watching a featurette and the composer said that they want some of the themes to feel like predecessors to the classic John Williams themes. So you hear some musical motifs in this game that sound like Harry Potter themes. I mean, not just the John Williams stuff, but also the stuff from later in the franchise. And you're like, holy crap, that's awesome. That's like Pokemon Legends Arceus shit, that's cool. And then of course, there'll be times where you just straight up hear Hedwig's theme because you can't have a story in this franchise without Hedwig's theme at this point. That would just be wrong. So that was cool too. I got the soundtrack to this game and it's just great. So in the end, Hogwarts Legacy, it proves that you can have a solid adventure in the wizarding world without its original creator. That needed to be done, actually. It was overdue. I love the environment. I love the combat. I love just exploring the place. The story is pretty good. The voice acting could have been better. The graphics on the characters could have been better. And sometimes the pacing of the story gets kind of wonky depending on how you play it. The extras are really fun. All in all, a solid 8.5 out of 10 I would give this. Not bad at all. And I hope they make another one. So, Hogwarts Legacy. Have you played it yet? What are your thoughts on it? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace!